when you've only got one chord to your name, it might seem like you don't have any real songs you can play yet. I mean, there's Frere Jaca and Row, Row, Row Your Boat, but no real, real songs, right? And yet there are real songs you can play with just your C chord. Harry Nilsson's Coconut, uh, the one in which you put the lime, uh, that one is just a C chord played throughout the whole thing, as is Aretha Franklin's Chain of Fools. How's that for real? Now, I'd love to walk you through both of those songs, but copyright law is complex and often expensive to navigate, so we're just gonna jam with a track that I made. If you listen to this jam in C, uh, or uh, the Nilsson and Franklin tunes, uh, it's easy to overlook the fact that there aren't any chord changes. That's because even though chords aren't moving, there's a lot of other movement going on, uh, be it riffs that different instruments are playing, the bass line might be dancing around the, the notes in the chord, or there are dramatic dynamic shifts, you know, up or down, loud or quiet, uh, that kind of help create changes in the song even though the chord isn't changed. Oftentimes with a song like this, groove is king, so this is a perfect opportunity to practice some strumming. So whether we're playing along to this jam and C, or we're playing along to Chain of Fools, uh, we want to listen to the song first. One, two, three, four. So we've got a little melody going on there, that wah-wah ukulele. You can kind of hear the rhythm where our strums might go. And just like when we were chunking, we can start opening things up. Maybe we need to slow it down a little bit, right? So maybe we'll just do long notes. Three, four. of options that we can do, right? So just like when we're chunking, we can strum long notes, we can strum a bunch of short notes all right next to each other, uh, we can play fast or slow depending on uh, what the track is doing, of course. You can probably hear a bunch of things in this, uh, in this song, like that ukulele that sounds like a guitar, like a lead guitar kind of uh, playing around in there. You can hear the bass moving, boom, boom, boom. Boom, 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 and of course the, the drums playing along, and all of those different rhythmic elements and those little riffy elements are all kind of combining to make something interesting, even though uh, the, the chord isn't moving from one chord to another. Now, just because a chord uh, doesn't change, we're not moving from a C chord to, say, an F chord or, or something like that, movement can still exist within that chord. Uh, a great place to move for this song uh, or uh, a Coconut or Chain of Fools uh, would be a C7 chord. So C chord is like this, where you've got your ring finger on the third fret of the A string. Well, this C7, we just put our pointer finger on the first fret of the A string like that. And then we have a C7 chord, and that's going to sound awesome with all of these songs. And one of the tricks that songs like this use 
they play around with notes that are close to the chord or that slightly change the chord, not to a new letter name, not to a new what we call root note, uh, but kind of these bonus notes that turn a C into a C7 or maybe a C add nine or something like that. Something, you know, one of those weird named chords. So this might be a perfect opportunity to practice playing C and C7, as well as just rocking out to the tune. Likewise, Coconut and Chain of Fools are going to have a, a similar vibe. One of the things that they're doing is kind of like playing these riffs. Riffs are kind of like melodies for rhythm instruments. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you might hear uh, some, some like rockin' riffs that might sound like... Even though something that like that is going to have a bunch of notes that are being played, it's tonally all working around one chord. We're not really changing chords, and all of those other notes, those extra notes that aren't in the chord proper, are moving by so fast, we're not really going to count them as chords. So they're just going to be these like little little riffs that that dance around and kind of make uh, the, the that that chordal center uh, a little bit more interesting so let's go to the beginning of this track uh, we'll listen for that count in again it's going to give us a one two one two three four and then we're in and uh, I'm gonna play um, kind of sparingly in here uh, so feel free to cram in as many notes or strums as you'd like to as you're playing this. I'm sure as you become more and more comfortable uh, with with doing this, uh, you'll you'll want to speed up and add some extra flourishes and, and stuff like that. But um, I'm going to try and keep it like pretty laid back. So if uh, if you're if you're just kind of jumping in this for the first time and you want to take it easy, just follow along with me. Seven. As you hear in the track, I'm playing all, all sorts of weird little uh, uh, 
kind of noodly guitar sounding stuff, right? Um, you know, just, I was kind of improvising and, and, uh, and, and playing a bunch of things like that. And you can do the same thing. Uh, it doesn't have to get complicated in order to do that. Uh, you can start off by just playing that C chord and instead of strumming the whole thing, you could just strum maybe one note at a time. that is totally valid and it's a great starting place whether you're just beginning or if you're if you've been playing for a little while uh, those notes are still going to be really important to the chord and are going to be great anchor points to build a solo or a riff or or whatever you want to call it uh, off of those notes so you have this track as an mp3 to play along with uh, whenever you want and of course you can always come back to this video and play along with me I hope you enjoy it and have fun jamming in C.